Yeah, I appreciate that. But what I'm going to do when I'm going to sign off, I'm going to quote from from mm. the unpublished chapters for you all. Okay. All right. As part of uh, the reading that I did in uh, on his birthday, and so that so that you so you would say, well, at least I heard from the unpublished chapters. <laughs> I'll be uh, honored. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. One of the things that Malcolm said in the unpublished chapters, uh, what he wanted his life to stand for. First of all, he said, I'm writing this book for the best interests of the Negro and the white man in America. I wasted seven years of my life in the streets of America. Today, after spending the transitional years of my life in Boston and later Harlan as a human predator, parasite, and leech, for all of which I was in inevitably apprenticing for self-destruction in Boston and afterwards spending the next seven years in prison, white America vilified and scorned me today in the news media's headlines over radio and television as the infamous black Muslim minister, Malcolm X, accused of teaching and spreading the untruth, hatred of the white man among my black brothers. No man has but so much time to do his life work and find his purpose for living. Everything that I do now takes on a sense of urgency. Today I have not the time to write a book merely with the ambition to excite or stimulate some reader's mind. I have, the readers will see, in years, Chapters to come who have lived as closely as it is possible for a Negro to live in the white man and live with the white man and the white woman. In fact, I consider my life to be a perfect mirror that reflects the attitude of the white man in America towards the black man. In part, in fact, this was what I learned of the white man that personally helped me to shape my thoughts, convictions, and positive core values of self-esteem, self-help, self-determination, and self-reliance that totally changed my life to the perspective about him that I have. Only a part of it is the white man in America scene especially seems to be, to me, in an in indeed in peculiar and ironic position to accuse of any black man of hatred. I tell the black man the truth of a race that enslaved our race to help build America. His rich country, a man who has raped our black foreparents' mothers until as a race today we are no longer even black, a white man who in every one of his wars took us to bleed and die with him, and yet for all this has rewarded us with the back of his hand and his table scrap for a hundred years since the Civil War. Now, I give my life to be used to benefit America and humanity, that America will learn that the Negro problem is a challenge to America's consciousness and that the Negro is America's problem. As long as America ignore the Negro, America will always be trouble and never be at peace. If my life story helped free the Negro mind to do for himself, his family, 
and his community, it would help America. Then the story of my life would have helped both races in the best interest of humanity to move beyond where we have been, where we are, and be of some use to transform America and the world to make it a better place for us all. Malcolm X, my interim introduction chapter of my autobiography. 